Hey quilters, it's Patty Carey of Patty's Patchwork. Thanks for joining the For the Brave Quilt Along, celebrating the 10th anniversary of Northcott's iconic Stonehenge Stars and Stripes collection. Together, we're making this stellar Quilts of Valor size quilt. I hope you've been enjoying the quilt along so far. I sure have. This month, we're working on block three. Here's what you need to get started. For block three, we're gonna need the B2, C4, and E4 pieces cut during month one, along with fabric I. Now, our fabric B is directional, so I'm going to separate them into like piles, with the direction of the print in each pile being the same. I'm going to start with the top triangles to use for step 16. I've got three triangles of B, two of C, and seven of E and I'm going to arrange them in two rows with fabric C in the top row and B in the bottom row. Now I'm going to sew the triangles together. We're going to refer to the tip at the top of page three a lot for this block as we align our patches. So every time we have an angle meets a straight edge, we align it 3 eighths of an inch as we do for the first pair. The triangles tips extend 3 eighths of an inch beyond the edge at top and bottom edges. Throughout this block we're going to finger press our seams away from fabric E. We continue across the top row adding the remaining triangle units. When we have straight meets angle we align it at 3 eighths of an inch beyond the uh, straight edge of the block and angle meets angle we align them so that they meet at the quarter inch seam line. Again, finger press away from fabric E and continue along, adding the remaining triangle units for our top row. Straight meets angle, 3 eighths of an inch, angle meets angle, aligned at the quarter inch seam line. I am going to finger press throughout this block. I don't press anything with an iron until I'm done. Now we repeat what we did in the top row in the bottom row, sewing the B2 triangles to the E triangles. I'm going to zip through this, finger pressing my seams away from fabric E. And then we can sew our two rows together. Those seams will nest where the triangle tips are. You can actually feel the one triangle will nest inside the other triangle tip. I pin them in place once I feel that they've nested properly. And I've got two spots along the row that I'm going to pin and then align the top and bottom edges so that they cross on the quarter inch seam line. I keep my pins in place until I just get to the pin and then I can remove it. This really helps keep the pieces aligned. I don't want to sew over the pins because that will damage my machine, but I keep them in place just until the end and those tips extend a quarter of an inch. And let's take a look. Lovely. I'm going to finger press my seam away from E, that would be towards B with this. And we're going to make a second unit as well. Now it's time to do the unit in step 19 using three C triangles, four B triangles, and five E triangles. And these use the side directional fabrics. I'm actually chain piecing both top and bottom rows at the same time here to speed things up so that I can get this done. And finger pressing away from fabric E as I go. Once they're done, I can add the top row to the bottom row Again, nesting those triangle tips inside the other ones. This time, the tips of fabric C will align 
right on top of the tip of triangle E at both ends of the block, sewing my quarter inch seam. And there you go. Now I'm going to trim the top triangle so that they are in line with the angled edge of the side. Next step, I'm going to take my D, my a fabric I square, and I'm going to use an easy miter Lone Star tool, the square corner of it, to mark the scant quarter inch seam line. If you do not have one of these tools, you can also use a ruler positioning the quarter inch line slightly off the edge of the fabric to mark a hash mark. That is the equivalent to using the square corner. I'm going to repeat that with the triangle units. This time I'm using the angled corner of the Easy Miter tool to mark my scant quarter inch seam line. Again, if you do not have one, position your ruler just slightly off the edge of the fabric on both the angled edge and the top edge to mark the hash lines. Now it's simply a case of connecting the dots. The dot on the triangle unit with the dot on the square. Pin them in place. When you do that, there will be an eighth of an inch dog ear of square extending beyond the angled mitered edge. And that's correct. Now we sew that seam line, sewing from dot to dot and securing the stitches at each end. You want to stitch between the dots, but not beyond the dot at either end. I keep my patches aligned. Sew towards that dot and get as close as you can without going past it. Then back stitch to secure your stitches. I'm going to add this, the matching triangles to opposite sides of my center square. Then I pin them out of the way so that I can add the other two matching triangle units to the remaining two edges. I've marked the quarter inch seam line on these as well. So you know what we're going to do. Match dot to dot. And again, you'll see that tiny tip of your fabric eye square extending beyond the angled edge of our triangle unit. So from dot to dot, securing the stitches at each end. There's our triangle, our corner. And we start at the dot, not going beyond it. Remove the pin so we don't break our needle. Keep our edges aligned as we sew the edges together and sew toward the dot, but not beyond it. Feel free to stop a stitch length before the dot and back stitch. It's not a hole, it's just a stitch length. Once we've got all four on, we can sew our angled edges closed. I align the outer tips and I'm going to match the seams at the midpoint. So I line the, the outer two tips, you don't need to back stitch, and those seams at the midpoint will nest beautifully. You notice I don't even pin, they are just nesting. And the two seams at the uh, square will also nest nicely. So to the dot, as close as you can get, but not beyond it. That's what causes a pucker. Then back stitch, and there you see I've left a space, but let's take a look. It is not a hole. We sew all four of those. I finger press my seams toward the center square and away from fabric E. And here you have block three. Make sure to head on over to the Northcott Instagram page to share a photo of your block and enter the month three giveaway. You have a chance at some fabulous prizes. There's also a Facebook group, the For the Brave Quilt Along Facebook group, if you'd like to share there. And if you haven't already done so, please pop on to my website, Patty's Patchwork, and join the For the Brave Quilt Along newsletter group. In the monthly newsletter, I share extra tips and tricks on how you can get your blocks done. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you back here next month for Block 4.